Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and once again at PAX Prime 2013. This is day two. Yesterday, actually last night, we published a PAX cast that talked briefly about SSD overclocking, which we did right here in this uh, lab area of the Intel booth. And I am joined by Justin Whitney today from uh, Intel's SSD marketing division. We're going to be talking more about the SSD overclocking feature, why it's relevant, what you can do with it, and uh, maybe even if you can expect it anytime soon. Uh, it is currently in a prototype phase. Justin, can you give me like a quick top-level overview of SSD overclocking? Yeah, um, what we're really what we're really doing at PAX this year is we were really excited to come for the first time ever and talk about an SSD overclocking technology. We're not necessarily saying we've got a product coming, anything like that. More important to us was to gauge both tech press, like yourself, so as as well as the attendees' reaction to that kind of technology. Yeah, we're not even sure that uh, the market wants something like that, but we've been playing around with a prototype and wanted to get that, that kind of reaction from our target audience. And uh, so far, how has the reaction been from your end users? Um, I'm actually shocked at how positive it's been. You know, we, we sat down with some uh, IT pros from data centers yesterday, and they were like, uh, why wouldn't we want to do this? And we thought, well, I mean, if there was any, any chance or possibility at all to corrupt data, by pushing a frequency too high or something like that, wouldn't you be really risk adverse to that type of situation? They were like, uh, you know, well, we would go through, do a lot of validation on our end, you know, tune performance to get higher IOPS, lock it down when it's stable. If we pushed it too hard, we'd back it off and do it again. So uh, that was a, you know, the biggest surprise or shock for me at the at the show so far. End users. You know, we're surrounded by uh, overclockers that take like a KSQ processor like the new 4770K. They're pushing it, they're like, give me another knob, that's awesome, let me go till it breaks, I don't care. Uh, six months, I'm gonna replace it anyway. You know, so, so far everything's been really positive. As far as actual functionality, uh, what can we overclock? What utility are we using to overclock it? Uh, really good question. You know, part of this technology demonstration is uh, we're looking at a beta version of Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. So, you know, any any system with uh, that with an Intel chipset has the ability to overclock uh, memory, you know, graphics, processor settings, that sort of thing. And they put a beta feature in just for SSDs. They're gonna show it at Intel's developer forum next week as well. Through, through that beta feature in XTU, we're looking at two settings on the drive. The, uh, the ASIC or the controller itself. And we've got a pretty uh, wide range of frequency settings for, for that uh, part of the drive. And then we look at the NAND channel bus. So you have all these flash parts soldered down, and what frequency are they talking to the controller as well? So the controller, and then the NAND, uh, the NAND channel frequency as well. So two knobs, and uh, they both have a little bit different impact on performance. As far as uh, actual performance gains, percentages, uh, stuff like that, what can we expect with overclocking SSDs? Uh, well, one, no, no promises on anything here, okay? It's True prototype status, um, no commitment to product or anything else. So numbers are, you know, just show and tell purpose right now. Um, depending on which setting, which benchmark you're running, and even which system you're sitting on with these prototypes right now, we've seen some increases in the 20% range, um, sp specifically in IOPS. IOP reads we've been seeing um, go up quite a bit, and the and the writes as well. So. Yeah, about, about 20, 10 to 20, so far. Sounds pretty good so far. So far. So for uh, one of the biggest questions we'll be getting is about endurance. Can you talk to us about endurance, what your, uh, if you have any predictions or if you have any, uh, any, anything you're specifically looking at reinforcing there? Or? We have no uh, formal validation runs that have anything that I would put any numbers associated to. Uh, short answer, I would say anytime you start overclocking the performance of a drive, you're probably gonna have a trade-off with endurance or the life of the product. Um, how much probably is gonna de be dependent on how far we allow you to push it. Are we gonna allow you to, you know, if, if it went to market, would we let you go so far that you're gonna cut the drive's life in half? I doubt we'd wanna be there. We'd have a lot of upset end users. Um, unless we disclaim the heck out of it, 
And we, you go to this, you know, this setting, and you know, you're you, you've cut it in half. I don't know where we're going to be. Our our guess is there's going to be some trade-off, and that's actually one of the questions we've got for everyone at PAX is. What would you do? You know, if you could get 20% in performance, would you give up 20% life, or you know, is that not something you want to mess with? So, it's totally variable depending on how much you push the drive. Have there been any uh, any discussions at Intel about KSQ SSDs or anything like that with unlocked overclocking features? A discussion, sure. Um, are we going to call it a K skew? I don't know if that was part of your question. Um, discussions, yeah. We haven't decided any of that. If we don't even know if we'll go to market, right? Um, but I think, in terms of the K skew association, there's some really strong affinity there. Um, even in terms of, you know, do you do you unlock it, overclock it, and then do you void your warranty if you had a product? I think this is going to be very similar to that. I would, I would imagine so. Um, so you'd likely validate at a known good frequency, and that's what you warranty. And if you want to push it further, you may be on your own. Um, and some pretty strong disclaimers would be uh, back up your data first. You know, don't put anything important on here while you're setting, uh, you know, going through and testing your settings. And then once you have it locked down, you know, then get your, your favorite games and your files and that sort of thing. Very cool. So I think we, we've talked about it quite a bit now. Can you show us what's going on here? Oh, I'd love to. Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. So after, you know, tuning some of the performance settings, why don't we take a look at the results? Um, we have three different comparisons that we're up that we have up on the screen right now. This this bottom score of 806 was from our Intel SSD 520 series. You, there's one you can talk about specs for sequential reads and writes, and then give me some you know some real incompressible data, test it out. What is reality in this case? I think we're you know we're seeing some some bus saturation in some regards. We're you know about 500 uh, megabytes per second on reads. We're not impacting that a whole lot. The writes we got to go up from like 286 megabytes a second on our 520 series up to 415 on our prototype, and then once we started overclocking that, we got another you know another 10 percent or so on those writes maybe a little under that. But if we look at the random scores, that's where it gets really interesting. Um, so I'm gonna switch to IOPS instead of megabytes a second. So from that perspective, we had about 60,000 IOPS for random reads and writes on that 520 series. And then when we looked at the prototype, default settings on that, we jumped up to 75,000 or so, overclocked it, Took it up to 88, almost 89,000. Um, really big IOP scores. You know, really nice jump from our 520 series. You know, high-end client drive up to just stock settings. You know, there was 10% or more on that, um, and then another 10% or or higher on uh, after we started overclocking it. Really depends on the settings. I think. Uh, what did we calculate? We were. 18 to 22 percent on random scores and in, um, increasing for those reads and writes. So, kind of a, a fun little experiment at this time. What do you guys think? I'd really like to know what your viewers think too. Yeah, I think uh, personally, I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting. If you have any thoughts or comments, leave them in the in the comment section below. And of course, tweet at Intel Gaming or at Gamers Nexus. And uh, thanks for the overview, Justin. We yeah. will see you guys next time. Peace.